Hello and welcome to this week's edition of News In Depth, which happens to be the last program this year. On this week's edition, we will be looking at challenges that the people in Nimba district are facing. We will also zero in on development initiatives that several stakeholders, including the First Ladies Foundation, are putting in place to uplift the livelihoods of the people in that district. I'm your host, Masauso Mkwayaya. Stay tuned. Located about 330 kilometers east of Lusaka is Nimba district. It is predominantly a rural area with about 90,000 residents. Nimba is dominated by fertile lands suitable for agriculture. However, the district is faced with numerous social challenges such as early marriages, high illiteracy levels, limited access to health facilities, and lack of access to safe drinking water. More than half of the entire population here depends on agriculture as a source of livelihood. Unfortunately, the success of farmers here is threatened by inadequate storage facilities for farming imports. Nimba District Agriculture Coordinator James Ngalamila confirms that inadequate seed and fertilizer storage sheds in the district has had an effect on the smooth distribution of farming imports. He says the major consequence of this development is delayed supply of inputs to the farmers. Mr. Ngalamila also disclosed that the district has just started receiving farming inputs for the 2016-2017 farming season, which could be immediately distributed to the farmers who are ready to collect the inputs. And Mr. Ngalamila says lack of storage facilities in Nimba has forced the district to keep its farming inputs in Katete. Farmers are getting their inputs. And then as regards for the fishery program, uh, we have actually delayed. Normally we start in November. So there was a delay in the district receiving the seed. For the fertilizer, uh, like for the D compound, okay, what we have is 43,070. So meaning that the allocation for all the, the D compound we have, but for urea, because of the challenge of storage space, okay, out of 37,000, we only received 7,000. So what happens, the other balance is kept in uh, Katete. So the way they are starting, you know, we, are, we get trucks every day so that they will do the transshipping. So normally every day there are trucks coming in to actually give out the fertilizer. Mr. Ngalamina has, however, reviewed that the district has received and distributed more than 9,000 bags of seed. He added that his office has also received the entire 43,000 bags of decompound fertilizer allocated to the district this farming season. Despite all these challenges surrounding the distribution of farming inputs, some farmers here seem happy with the farming inputs distribution exercise. <laughs> Tukukosotina <laughs> Neo na nkala uko nwe na ngako kutifa treza wa wera maubuino. Ndipo atika konzeru wa ediga. Ndipo apitirije pa nkala odedi. Kutisa marida. Ndipo kwa next year ikuza. Atike kwa soti nzeru. Seta nkala uko nwe na. Nimba district is also a border town. It can be used as a gateway into Nimba in Mozambique. However, chifundake of the Nsenga-speaking people says the Zambia-Mozambique border is uncontrolled and porous. Chief Undake notes that his chiefdom is expressing high rates of animal diseases being caused by uncontrolled animal movements between Dake chiefdom and Mozambique. The Nsenga chief says people in his chiefdom, which is only about 30 kilometers from the Zambia-Mozambique border, are vulnerable to contracting various diseases because they drink water from the same source with the diseased animals. It is for this reason that the traditional leader is calling for the construction of animal deep tanks, which will help reduce the transmission of diseases from animals to people.
The proposal to build the deep tanks has already been considered by the provincial administration. Eastern Province Minister Makebe Zulu says plans to construct deep tanks in Nimba district are in the pipeline. The project is expected to be implemented in collaboration with the Nimba District Commissioner's Office to make sure that the animal deep tanks project is delivered as soon as possible. Aside from the construction of deep tanks, the Eastern Province Minister said his office will engage the Ministry of Water and Sanitation to help address water challenges people in Dake Chiefdom are facing. Mr. Zulu further hinted the involvement of the First Lady's Esther Lungu Foundation Trust in the provision of water to the area. <laughs> It was therefore not a strange coincidence to have the first lady visit Nima district. She was in the area to receive a donation that would have a positive impact on the residents. The Bible Gospel Church in Africa, Bigoka, donated five boho's to the First Lady's Foundation, a development that feeds into the overall vision of improving access to water and sanitation services in Nimba. We are all gathered here today to witness what our mother, the First Lady of the Republic of Zambia, had asked us to do when we earlier uh, requested her office to choose places nearby where she could have loved us to sink the bohos. That time she gave us a go ahead to do a survey and then sink the, uh, the bohos and later uh, inform her office. And we did. So after sinking the bohos, a total number of eight were sunk, of which uh, three were in Chipata district, and five were done right here in Nyimba district. The gesture by Bigoka pleased the First Lady who appreciated the church for its role in uplifting the living standards of the less privileged in Eastern Province. The First Lady said she was happy that the church has helped put up eight boreholes in Eastern Province of which Nyimba has received five. She is certain that the move will lessen the time that women and girls spend in fetching water. We may all be aware that the rainy season is critical to livelihoods of our brothers and sisters in the rural areas who are dependent on rain-fed agriculture. I have no doubt that these boreholes will help lessen this time spent on fetching water, which time will now be invested in agricultural activities. Your Royal Highness, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to salute the noble efforts of the Bible Gospel Church in Africa under the leadership of Bishop Ndlovu, who are doing a commendable job not only in the Eastern Province, but in all parts of the nation. While the challenge in accessing water and sanitation services seems to dominate the needs of Nimba residents, Challenges here largely cut across all key development sectors. And this has prompted World Vision Zambia to launch a two million US dollars village transformation project aimed at uplifting the lives of over 46,000 people in Nimba district. The occasion that we have today is culminating uh, from this process that we had in working with the district, uh, government staff, uh, the traditional leadership, the community members and other interested parties in making sure that we design the project to, to be what it will be doing in the next five years. Uh, this project is a two million dollar project uh, and uh, it's been funded through World Vision United States 
uh, from a foundation called 2540 Foundation. And uh, this project uh, will contribute to the improvement of social, economic, and spiritual status of 7,000, 704,000 households and representing 46,228 people in 157 villages of Chief Ndake's area under what we call the Nyimba Area Program of World Vision. The residents of Ndake Chief Dog were not to be left out of this ambitious project. This is why they converged at Chief Fundake's Rezi Palace to witness the launch of the project whose benefits will transform their way of life. Being provincial minister of the Eastern Province, hereby declare the Nimba Village Transformation Project officially launched. People in Indake village are also faced with numerous economic hardships. Arising from this, World Vision Zambia has launched a three-year project aimed at addressing some of these challenges. The religious NGO is implementing a three-year project which will improve the lives of people in four key development sectors, namely education, health, water and sanitation, and economic development. Our call is to also bear witness to Jesus Christ. Uh, by serving the most vulnerable children in Zambia, that includes their families as well, through tackling causes of poverty and injustice. And uh, by, we hope that by the year 2020, World Vision will contribute to measurable and sustainable improvement in the well-being of 670,000 children across the country. And um, uh, we know that we can only do that if we're working with the traditional leadership, the political leadership, and the um, civil servants in our country. And that's why we are happy to see that all those areas that I've mentioned are represented here. Government is gratified by the project. World Vision is implementing the district to which it has pledged continued support. Eastern Province Minister Makebi Zulu says the project will help improve the water and sanitation coverage in Indake village. This is a huge investment by World Vision Zambia aimed at improving the social economic status of the people of Nimba, particularly the people in Chief Ndake's chiefdom. On behalf of the government of the Republic of Zambia, and indeed on my own behalf, I wish to express my sincere gratitude to World Vision for providing financial support amounting to over $2 million for interventions in the five sectors under this project, namely livelihoods and economic development, health and nutrition, literacy, gender and Christian commitment, water and sanitation. And Chief Ndake on the Senga speaking people has held World Vision Zambia for coming to the aid of his subjects. The chief says he and his subjects will do their part to make sure the project succeeds. May I also thank World Vision for the many successful projects that have been implemented in Nyimba and in my chiefdom in particular since the year 2009. I am aware of the partnership that has existed since then and the active collaboration in areas of HIV AIDS, food security, water and sanitation that the chiefdom through our Senga Cultural Heritage Institute in Shi has actively been involved in the implementing of such programs. The viability of livestock farming in Nimba is also of interest to World Vision Zambia. World Vision is supplying goats to well over 90 households as an empowerment strategy. Under this initiative, each household is given five goats, one male and four female. When the goats reproduce, households are expected to give back the goats to World Vision, after which the organization then gives the returned goats to other households.
talks. Recently, the government has been talking about uh, how that we need to tap into the Saudi Arabian uh, uh, market. Uh, people need goats there. And we think that that is the greatest opportunity for us, uh, for our people in the community, to participate in that, uh, in that supply chain, as it were. So we, 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 we supported, uh, in the, in the, like last year, we supported about 90 uh, families with, uh, with, with goats. And, and in June, we'll be uh, witnessing a person event uh, where a number of families, and we are, we are targeting uh, 80 families that should receive uh, uh, goats. Uh, and, 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 and we think that if we consistently do that over a period of time, we should be able to have greater numbers of, 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 of goats in the, in the community and many more households uh, you know, having that kind of, that, that kind of, of, a, of any economic factor that should be able to, 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 to help them raise income. Challenges in the district also extend to the health sector. Ndake Health Post does not have maternity services. Pregnant mothers here are sometimes forced to deliver babies from their homes. The first lady says she is touched to learn that the health post does not have enough space for maternity services. This provoked the first lady, Esther Lungo, to make a donation of 3,500 kwacha towards the construction of a maternity wing at Indake Health Post. It would be in my interest to see that this structure is completed before June. I'll keep in touch and make a call out. So, Paripa, I know that we have to do a committee. This will be equivalent to 3,500 uh, in total. 3,500 kwacha, you have 50 pockets, yes, mint. It has already been established that access to education services is a major point of interest. Nimba district is faced with serious shortages of schools, leading to children here walking long distances to access formal education. But the Ministry of General Education says it is working round the clock to ensure that Nimba also receives a share of education infrastructure development. As you may be aware, the Ministry of Education is the largest minister uh, which cuts across all the ten provinces. We are spread across the country regardless of the distance. That in itself tells you the volume of challenges that we face. Challenges of learning material, challenges of teacher retention, challenges of infrastructure, challenges of uh, logistical issues in place such as motor vehicles and the like that can support education. In itself that would mean challenges are there. However, the developments that are going around the, uh, the country through the PF governor, governance and the systems in place, I can just assure you that they have also benefited. There are issues of schools being put up such as uh, Chiwale Secondary School, and it's about 90% complete. If I had to inject some cash in it, I know for sure to by next year come 2017, the school will be up and running. And the Ministry of General Education has plans to work with the Ministry of Energy to ensure that schools in Inimba are connected to the electricity grid. Ministry of Education does not work in isolation. We have other ministries that have come on board. For example, I'll give an example for Minister of Energy. Rural electrification, is it there? Yeah. Uh, they have come on board as well. Electrify rural places, Nimba has also benefited. I suppose it has benefited in Nimba because rural, Nimba way back, it used to be a place with no electricity. Um, to give an example, my grandfather was an agriculturist there. There was no electricity at that time. If I'm to go backwards, Nimba has developed 
and they stood up in that place there was no electricity. It was at that time. But today go to Nimba the electricity. They are connected to the grid. However, despite all these development initiatives in the Nimba districts, movements in the area during the rainy season become challenging. This is because the entire 35 kilometers of township roads in the Nimba are earth roads. The only third road in the district is the Great East Road, which runs from Lusaka all the way to the Zambia-Malawi border in Eastern Province. All we are waiting for now is the government to come in, because as a council I think we have done everything. And we made a follow-up with the Minister, Minister of Law Government. He promised us to say they, they had some issues with the contractor. Uh -huh. So uh, I'm told now is, uh, it will be finalized soon and uh, we may have our, 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 our township roads worked on any time from now. We are likely to, 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 to be given about 16.4 kilometers. And World Vision Zambia Nimba Area Program Manager Nathan Chiterela says lack of roads in the district makes it difficult for his organization to deliver social services to the people. He says children in far-flung villages also find it difficult to go to school due to bad roads in the district. We have challenges uh, traveling in and out of, of, of Ndake community, but much more for the people of Ndake, you know, uh, for them to, to, to get their uh, produ produce to, to the market, they need the proper road network. And, the, and that's, that's why we, we think that the government needs to play a bigger role there. Uh, as an NGO, as World Vision, we, our mandate is, is, is not in, the, in road construction. We are in social development, and, 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 and so we are focusing on other things, and we think that the government will do, play a bigger role you know, by, by, by improving the road network in the community to enable children to go to school, to enable farmers to take their produce to the nearby uh, uh, markets, and, 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 and improving the social uh, economic welfare of, of the people of Undake and Nimba uh, district in particular. And some residents spoken to have called on government to give Nimba a share of the many road projects going on in different parts of the country. When it comes to, to roads in Nimba, the roads are actually very bad, especially these rock roads, because we only have one third road. So our appeal to the government is that uh, they should at least work on the roads, so that at least they can lessen the, the accident as well as the, the tearing out of the, the car spares because the roads are, are very bad. And again, we are wondering why, because there was a project which they said the, the, the SEB was going to make the rock roads. They came with the machines, but all in all, they came back and carried the machines back. So we don't know what is happening. So you Nimba, which doubles as a transit and border town, has immense potential of becoming an agriculture hub. However, this will require concerted efforts from all. Here is where we come to the end of this week's edition of News In-Depth, where we are looking at development initiatives in Nimba district and the challenges that people in that area are facing. This happens to be the last News In-Depth program in the year 2016. Thank you so much for your viewership. We value your support so much. Join us next year for a series of news in-depth documentaries. I have been your host, Masao So. Mkwayaya, compliments of the season, pleasant viewing.